All right, welcome to Valuable Coaching. Uh, this is Valuable Coaching Daily. We're on uh, day three. Um, we got my co-host Kevin here with me today. Um, we're just going to kind of talk a little bit about what's been going on in some of the interviews we've been doing. Um, and, you know, we'd love for you to follow us on YouTube, uh, listen to us on Anchor, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and uh, follow us on Instagram at Valuable Coaching. You know, leave us some comments. Uh, if there's any questions you want asked of some of the club directors, um, Division One coaches that, that we're able to talk to, you know, we'd love to get those answered for you. So please go ahead and give us some feedback. Um, Kevin, I just, just first thing, you know, what have been some of your takeaways so far in these interviews that we've been doing? Yeah, uh, this is a great idea, uh, Miles. I'm glad we're doing this, and uh, it sure has been a blast. Uh, one thing that I took away, and you and I both had the luxury we know these guys pretty well who we've interviewed, you know, uh, which is good. And I can't wait till we expand and maybe interview some people we don't know as well. But I've realized whether they're a director, a beach coach, or an AIA indoor coach, um, it's all to them about like culture and building life skills. Like at one point, it's always gotten that way in the interview, whether they're talking about how they're training their kids, how they're getting their kids ready to have jobs after they get to college or how club directors are doing grade checks like rob rios does grade checks matt Houlihan's doing a ton of life skills stuff so that to me i think as club directors high school coaches they really should continue to put a premium on building the whole person because that's what these college coaches want yeah i mean i i've come across that too and um you know, I appreciate, I think both of us kind of came from that mindset before we started this. And it's, it's been just kind of justification of the fact that when you're working with young athletes, and I think as teachers with us working with young kids, you're doing more than just uh, keeping them active or giving them a sport. You definitely have to be building them up, um, teaching them some skills, you know, how to be resilient, how to be leaders. Um, because I think I said yesterday in, in um, the brief one that I did, you know, you need those skills going forward in life and team sports is a great way to get them. You know, I know I've been in job interviews before where they put a premium on it if you played team sports in high school or college because they know that, that, that you're going to be able to work with other people. Yeah, absolutely. One question I have for you, uh, Miles, is what has uh, fired you up the most about this podcast and what has maybe been a pleasant surprise? I, I mean, I think to me – the, the thing that I've enjoyed most is, is just some of the extra conversation really that, that hasn't been videoed. Um, and again, like I said to you also just the, the justification that, you know, we're, we're doing some things correct. And that then there's also some things we can improve upon um, and trying to just take away those key notes from, from people. Um, I've loved the other thing I've really loved in this time uh, of COVID where these coaches are having to really get creative. Um, yeah. You know, I love hearing from, Coach Sam Crossan at, at Berkeley and from Todd Hollenbeck uh, at Menlo, how they really have gotten creative to continue to build their teams, build that culture. They're both newer at those programs. And, you know, they really couldn't just sit this time out and, and not get to know their players, not continue to recruit, not to kind of continue to build their culture that, that they want to see uh, in those programs. And, and so those stories um, have really meant a lot. Um, I think, you know, Sam Crossan going out there and, um, you know, not just breaking down game film every day, not just talking volleyball every day, but really talking life with um, the girls on his team and with his assistant coaches. Um, I think that probably means a lot. And those are the things that, that those players are really going to take away and remember probably down the road, even more so than the, the wins and losses um, and the, the game film that they get to watch. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this doesn't surprise me, but it's just the volleyball community is so awesome. We have not gotten turned down on an interview. And, um, you know, even we're getting guys from like Illinois, we're going to get uh, Dan Fisher down the road. We're getting guys, you know, like Sam Crossan, but everyone wants to get involved. And, and I think it's because they respect us. They want to support us. And I think we're doing something that's kind of neat and unique about the game. Uh, so that, that's, what's really fired me up. And then, uh, also too, I just, I am very appreciative, like you said, the off-air conversation. Every coach is – is it's great. We're in the profession of coaching. So, in a sense, for lack of a better term, they coach us up and they go, 
hey, you should do this or show up to the ABCA convention center or go to JO's. And Allie Daly spent an hour with you after the podcast at 1030 at night yeah. uh, with their husband and gave you all these ideas. And it's people want to see this succeed because I, I think that there can be some value out of this. So it's been pretty exciting. Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, we had a little bit of a struggle back and forth coming up with the, the right name for the podcast, but I think – um, I think we kind of nailed it with valuable coaching because I think these coaches, club directors, they are, they're looking to pass on valuable lessons to other people. And, and my takeaway as, as a parent versus a coach is that there, you know, there's definitely directors out there and stuff that are trying to pass on good values. Um, you know, and, and my hope is that there's more youth coaches, um, you know, maybe even coach other sports that can see that, that these life skills and, you know, conditioning and healthy eating, those things are, are very important for them to teach, not just that they need to go out and try and win their next, you know, seven and under basketball game. There's bigger things going on in life than just that. Um, and, you know, to know that there are people out there directing clubs um, and that's one of their main missions is, you know, is, is awesome to hear. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, go ahead. Did you have a question? I uh, know you can go ahead. So uh, I, I also wanted to know what has maybe been the biggest surprise for you so far? Maybe a surprise, what a guest said, or during this process, what has surprised you? Well, I mean, I think my biggest surprise, like you said, is just how how supportive people have been. I mean, I didn't know how people would take it. Um, you know, I, I know, like you said, we, we know some of these people personally, but, but they're, they're busy. Um, you know, I think, I think majority of them so far have families. Um, they're coaching, they're coaching club, they're, you know, they're doing all kinds of different things. So to take time out for us, um, you know, I, I would have hoped that they would have those, you know, types of feedback for us. But to be honest, I thought they'd try and get on, give us their answers and, and you know, say bye. And really, like you said, you know, for Allie and her husband, Kevin, to spend all that time with us and give us lots of ideas and, you know, kind of like their philosophy with both their club and with coaching the, the beach team at UC Davis you know, they want to build, um, you know, they want to build on volleyball and they want to build character for people. And, and I think they were so willing to pass it along that that really has, um, you know, it's kind of taken me back a little bit. And, um, you know, it, it keeps me going and wanting to find more people to talk to because, um, you know, I feel like the sky's the limit when they're, when they're giving us that kind of encouragement. Absolutely. I've, uh, yeah, that's a good point. And for you viewers out there, you know, Coach Miles and I, like, the foundation was the University of Pacific. That's where we played. And although you're a little older and uh, we didn't play at the same time, uh, every interview you could argue has fingerprints of the University of Pacific. Even Rob Rios, where you're like, well, he didn't go to Pacific. It's like, well, I met him through Coach Hollenbeck. Coach Hollenbeck was my teammate at University of Pacific. Coach Crossin was a Pacific Tiger. Coach mm -hmm. Thomas is a Pacific Tiger. Coach Allie, you coached after you graduated, and I met her not through you. I met her working camps at UCLA, but I got that job because I went to UOP, and that's the connections that got me there. So I think if anyone's ever on the fence as a college athlete, ah, should I play, should I not, you could have a lifetime journey, you know, of – connecting the dots in volleyball and having a lot of life skills yeah, uh, due to just playing. So that's been a, you know, a pleasant surprise. And, and uh, you know, I guess it doesn't surprise me, but what actually really surprised me, I was like, ah, and, and it doesn't surprise me because he's a great guy and I know him really well. And he's one of my best friends, but you know, Todd didn't give a PC answer when we said, uh, you know, what motivated you as an athlete to keep going, you know, or something like that. And he just looked us dead in the eye. It's like, oh, it's when Coach Crossan at Pacific said, I'll never be able to play. And it, and what I thought was cool is it was really refreshing. Yeah. And uh, I think it's good. And that's why we do the podcast to get things like that. And I also know if we said that to Sam Crossan, he'd be like, yeah, I did say that. And at the time, that's how I felt, you know? Yeah, they, they've all been very authentic, which is nice. And again, I think that's something that, um, is important because I think that's what's making their program successful and grow and, and it's going to make athletes want to go be with them. Um, I think 
too often coaches sometimes think that there's a certain way they're supposed to act or, or how hard they should push people. And, you know, again, that, that doesn't come across very genuine and, and then your players aren't going to want to play for you. So, um, you know, that, that I've really liked. I kind of wanted to shift gears a little bit and, and ask you, you know, you're actually getting the opportunity to coach right now. Um, has there been anything that you've been able to use actually at practice and in talking with your players or even talking with other coaches so far um, that you've gotten out of this? It's been fun. You know, uh, I am very fortunate. You know, I don't want to necessarily say I live in the Mecca of volleyball. I had nothing to take away from Orange County or LA or even a place like Nebraska or Washington up in Seattle. They've got a good program, but San Diego's got a pulse, you know, and we, we've got volleyball going and I'm lucky to work for a great club in Wave and I work at Bishops and it's a nice little private school, but it's kind of cool. People have caught Wave, for lack of a better term, that we're doing this and obviously people are kind of watching it and they talk to me about it. And then what's cool is some of these things I can just reiterate where it's like to my players when I'm walking into a gym, be like, hey, that coach is stressing, stressing that to his program, like Coach Rios or Coach Woolahan, the club level, and look how successful his team is, you know? Or, um, you know, if a parent says, should we do a strength and conditioning program for our son or daughter? I go, hey, you know, there has not been a college coach I have not spoke to in the last three weeks that says you shouldn't do that. So, yeah. um, you know, kind of a little bit what you're saying, though, I don't think – we've necessarily reinvented the wheel with what these coaches are saying. However, I think it's just reiterating, like, now we got a little bit more oomph when we say this, because it's like, hey, this is what Cal's talking about. This is what Menlo's talking about. This is what the great clubs are talking about. So, um, but I've definitely, when it's gotten brought up, I definitely enjoy talking about it, and it's it's, it's fun to do. Yeah. Yeah, well, um you know, I think we're going to continue to bring these daily updates from either myself and when uh, Kevin can jump on, we'll, we'll talk and have a conversation. Uh, we're going to try and start breaking down some of the, the previous episodes and focus a little bit more in on some of their answers and give some feedback on the answers that, that coaches have given. Um, we got some great people coming up. Um, Kevin mentioned we have Chris Thomas, head coach at University of Illinois, at the top, you know, top 10 program in the country. Um, he played professionally. Um, I, I had the luxury of, of being on a team with him for a year and um, I can say, you know, no better leader that I've been around um, both leading by example and through, you know, his message. And so I can only imagine now as a coach and with, with more years of experience, um, you know, how, how it would be to be on his team or working on his staff. Um, Kevin, you have somebody else that, that we're going to be talking to tomorrow. Maybe you can give a little more insight. Um, yeah, we're, we're thrilled. We're, we're going to be talking to Nikki uh, over at Coach Nikki at uh, McKendry. She's super unique in the sense where she's coaching uh, women's college volleyball and men's college volleyball at the same university. Also, you'll find in the interview, she is so involved in volleyball. She's all in. Uh, she's really involved in the First Point, which is an organization that's getting more conferences to start volleyball. And Coach John Spraw, and it's on the men's side. Coach John Spra, UCLA and USA, he's part of it. Don Gleason over at Damon. There's a ton of really big names, and she's part of those movers and shakers. Uh, she's also part of a, a ton of ABCA committees, and she's just she's doing it the right way. And uh, it'll be really fun to pick her brain because, gosh, she is all in, a, in a, and I mean this in the uh, nicest way, just the biggest volley dork you can meet, you know, so – I'm looking forward to interviewing her and, uh, of course, a mentor in Chris Thomas, Coach Chris Thomas. He's he's amazing. So, former Tiger. So, that'll be yeah. fun. Yeah, and then, you know, we're hoping to to talk with, you know, some, some strength trainers because, like Kevin brought up, you know, that's something that everybody's been saying. And so, you know, we want to pick their brain a little bit um, again. And, you know, if anybody has any ideas, anybody wants to jump on here and, and talk with us, you know, we'd love to have you. Um, again, follow us on YouTube, subscribe, um, follow us on Anchor, Google Podcasts, Spotify, um, you know, and listen to these episodes. Hopefully you guys, again, can, can take away some, some messages that will help you out, um, whether you're a coach, um, a player, or even a parent um, trying to, you know, figure out what the best path is for, you know, your student athlete going forward. So uh, anyways, 
thanks, Kevin, for jumping on here today. Um, we'll, uh, we'll have more to come in the next week or so, and we'll, we'll continue making these daily podcasts. And then, um, you know, we'll have our biweekly, um, you know, longer form interviews uh, as well. So thanks, Kevin, and we'll, uh, we'll chat again soon. Awesome.